Recently, I did a video on five reasons why I still use Cakewalk in 2021. And one of the most requested follow-up videos was to go more in depth about the mix recall feature. Likewise, longtime subscriber Timothy Reynolds also suggested that I cover screen sets and even give a few examples as to how each of these features might be found useful in real world applications. So let's look a little bit deeper at these particular features, and I'm gonna show you some real world applications as to how they would be helpful in your workflow. First off, let's look at screen sets. The screen set module that's found in the control bar is used to manage screen sets within Cakewalk by BandLab. The screen set module contains a menu that has 10 different buttons to select different screen sets. Now, the name of the current screen set is shown in the screen sets menu, and it corresponds to the button that is highlighted. As you can see here, screen set number one is set to number one, as well as number two is set to two. The screen sets module in the control bar contains the following controls. It has the screen set menu, which is found here. And this menu lets you select, revert, lock, rename, duplicate, and even import screen sets. You'll see here a list from one to 10, which gives the varying screen sets that you have already selected and set up. Likewise, there is the revert current screen set. This option reverts the current screen set to its last save state before the project was saved. Likewise, the lock or unlock current screen set allows you to lock the current screen set to prevent any modifications being done to it. The rename current screen set option allows you to rename the current screen set that you're currently on. The duplicate current screen set allows you to copy the current screen set to another screen set location, whether that be one through 10, and select the target screen set location from the sub menu. The selected target screen set then becomes the current screen set. Lastly, you're able to import screen sets from another project and any locked screen sets in the current project are not overwritten when this is used. Now let's talk about some practical applications and how these screen sets could be used to improve your workflow. Let's say for instance, that you want the screen much like I have in front of me where my track pane is here and my bus pane is here. I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a screen set. After renaming this track slash bus pane, I'm gonna hit okay. And that is gonna be set as screen set number one. Okay, so screen set number one is set, and now I'm gonna to move to screen set number two. By moving to screen set number two, you can see many options are now available to me that were not currently available before, such as the pro channel over here, as well as my browser panel over here. Let's say that I don't want my browser panel open on screen set number two, I simply just wanna see the pro channel. Now I can simply set it up as it looks now. I'm gonna rename this one tracks slash PC for pro channel and hit okay. Now, instead of having to open up several different things within the project itself by clicking these right and left arrows and docking things and undocking things, I can simply select between these different screen presets. So going back to screens preset number one, you can see I have my bus and my tracks pane visible. Going back to screen set number two, now you'll see that the pro channel is visible along with the tracks pane. Let's create one more screen set just to show you exactly how useful this could be. So I'm gonna to move to screen set number three. Now going up to the views menu, I'm gonna open up the synth rack view. I'm also gonna open up the console view. Let's dock the console view down here at the bottom and I'll have my browser pane up here on the right-hand side. So there's a lot of information going on on the screen, a lot of pertinent information that I may wanna get access to quickly without having to open several different views at once. Now I'm gonna save this screen set as all views. So starting back at the very first screen set, you can see that I have my first option available here, which is just my tracks and bus pane. By switching to screen set number two, now I have my tracks only and the pro channel, and by switching to screen set number three, now I have all of the views present that I might need in a project. So essentially the key takeaway here for practical application is that screen sets provide ease of use as well as productivity hacks for your workflow. All right, now let's go over the mix recall feature that's found within Cakewalk by BandLab. The mix recall feature allows you to save and recall multiple mixes for the same project without having to save multiple copies of the project file. A mix can be saved as a mix scene within the project and each project can store multiple mix scenes. A mix scene contains all the track, bus, hardware output, 
Pro Channel and Plugin Static and Automation Mix Settings. With Mix Recall, you can freely experiment with different mix ideas without affecting previous mixes. You can be confident that you can return to an earlier mix at any time. You can also easily compare different mixes. There is even a command to toggle between the two most recently used mix scenes. Let me show you an example of how this might work. Let's say that you have a fully finished mix here in front of you and you've sent it off to the client. The client calls back or emails you back and says that they really like the mix, but is there any way that you could make the vocals just two dBs louder? Well, you could simply save this first mix scene as original mix. Now, the original mix that has been sent to the client will never be lost, and you can always revert back to that original mix. However, they did say that they wanted those vocals brought up just a few dBs. So, we're going to do that now. All right, with the Vox bus moved up to just 2 dBs, now I'm going to go ahead and save a new mix scene by going to Save as New Scene, found here. And I'm going to call this Vox up 2 dBs. And this is where the practical application comes in, because you literally can create alternative mixes for specific purposes, such as album versions, radio edits, acapellas, instrumentals, temporary headphone mixes while recording, etc. Audio and MIDI data in the project is unaffected by mix scenes, so edits to audio and MIDI data are preserved across all mix scenes. You can even restore a project to a prior mix or a subset of tracks or buses, leaving other tracks unaffected. So if you want a quick way to reset the entire project or a subset of tracks or buses to a default flat mix, for instance, you just simply can use the mix recall feature. All right, let's see this in action. Keep your eyes down here on the Vox bus output volume. I'm now going to change it back to the original mix. You'll notice that after the original mix is being recalled, that the Vox output volume is set back to zero as it was in the original mix. And now, by going up here again and going to Vox up 2 dBs, the only thing that was affected was that which was changed and saved as a new scene, and the Vox are now up 2 dBs again. Another great practical application for using the mix recall scenes is that you can actually export the multiple mixes that you've saved within these. To do this, simply go to your export feature that's found here, export audio, and now from the drop down menu, you can select mix recall. You'll notice I have two different mix options that I can then export the original mix and the Vox up 2 dBs. Each one of these mixes will be exported separately into two different separate files. This can save a ton of time when you need to send off different revisions for different reasons, maybe no drums or no bass. As you can see, this can be a huge time saver in your workflow. Now, the last thing that I want to cover is the mix recall settings options that's found here. You'll notice that there are a list of options that you can actually use in the mix recall. You can recall controls, automation, and effects, or if you want to leave them completely unaffected, you can uncheck these boxes as well. There's also a feature that will ask you every time if you want to do this, and there are advanced features where you can actually select this to either affect or not affect other aspects such as track controls, automation, bus controls and automation, or your hardware outputs and offset values. You can even set this to be applied to an entire project or just a track or bus selection. And if at any time these settings get changed and you're unsure as to what they were, you can always go back to the defaults button found here. If you would like to learn Cakewalk by BandLab from the ground up, everything from installing and downloading all the way to releasing a radio-ready mix with multi-tracks provided as well to add to your portfolio, you can always go and check out the ultimate Cakewalk by BandLab course that I've created on the ProMix Academy. All applicable links will be in the description of this video. And until next time, remember we can dream alone, we can even create alone, but together we can achieve so much more.